pop in alone. Aaron McLeod, absolutely unconscious. It was just back in February of 2020 when the Orlando Pride signed longtime Team Canada goalkeeper Aaron McLeod. But her journey at an elite level really began back in 2002 at the FIFA Under-19 World Cup before thousands of fans in her home province of Alberta. It was there that Erin got her first true taste of the Canada-US rivalry on a big stage. And each and every meeting from then on sees Erin elevate her game to new heights. Erin continues to add to her resume, playing in four World Cups over the years. In 2012, she helped lead Canada to Olympic bronze in London, a feat that had never been accomplished by our women before. Just prior to the Rio Olympics, Erin tore her ACL the third time she'd injured that knee, but she battled back. Erin is known as a great communicator on the pitch and she's quick to offer guidance to young players learning the ropes. Through it all, Erin continues to be at the top of her game. Erin, it is so nice to see you. And I want to point out you're in Reykjavik with us today and you've been on loan with a club there. And I could not wrap my mind around the spelling. Can you say the name of the club? I'm not even going to try. Yeah, it's actually Starnan. It's not that hard, but it's spelled oh, okay. J A R N A N. <laughs> and the whole time I've been here, literally until two weeks ago, I was saying Starnan because I wanted to like fit in with the Icelandic people. And and then my girlfriend was like, it's actually just Starnan. That way. Good. So. <laughs> okay, so keep it simple, stupid, is what they say. So you right, said with right, Starnan. Right. But you're actually heading back to Canada because the season was canceled. So how many games did you ultimately get to play? So I was here for eight games um, and only the last two got canceled. So um, it ended up work, you know, working out as well as it could have. Uh, the pandemic kind of keeps things in perspective. So I feel very, very lucky that I was able to play and, and now lucky in the sense that I get to make my way home. You had just signed with Orlando when the pandemic struck and we know what happened with the pride not being able to, to play. Um, so just describe maybe if you could the last eight months of your life. Well, it's been interesting, right? I, I think for everybody, my focus all year has just as much as I can been on what I can control mm -hmm. or what is within my control. It has been a, a lot of ups and downs. I think we were four days away from going to the Challenge Cup as a team with the Orlando Pride and ended up being pretty gut-wrenching that we couldn't go. Having said that, I got to spend a lot of time with the rents, my, my poor father kicking a ball for me <laughs> and, and getting to know my parents as adults, which doesn't actually get to happen that much when you're we're a kid. You know, you don't get to know yeah your parents. And so there's been a lot of great things that have come from it. I've been able to play healthy and, and play as much as I could have a season. And that has just been an absolute blessing. I would think as I got older that I would love the game less maybe, but the fire still burning pretty, pretty hard. To what do you attribute your enduring love of the game? Because I mean, we were just talking before we, we went live here. I mean, you've lived in so many places. It's obviously it's a grind. Um, and it gets harder and harder on your body, but how do you love it so much still? I think what I have been uh, blessed with maybe my whole life is just the passion for learning. And I think sport is just a vehicle. When I'm not on the field, I'm also taking a bunch of courses and I'm constantly trying to evolve as a person. But I think it's just, it's always come so naturally in soccer and the thrill of a save or like small little details, the small little inches or technique, um, things that I can just focus on. And then the moment it clicks in a game or in a training session, uh, there's not a lot like it. And I'm trying to transfer it to things outside of sport because although some might think I would play forever, I'm, I'm not going to be able to. So uh, being able to apply that to other passions um, has been something I'm very grateful for and being very aware that this could be my last year or so. And so focusing um, on myself as a, a whole human, not just uh, as an athlete. Okay, well, this leads us perfectly into the Mindful Project, which you announced that you've expanded. Um, so let's just start from the nuts and bolts of it, and I'll ask you, what is the Mindful Project? 
Yeah, I'm not the best at short answers, but <laughs> basically um, I've had a like a love-hate relationship with my sport for a long time and love hate mostly I think probably more accurately with myself and I've been a perfectionist for as long as I can remember and I've always been really hard on myself and I got to this breaking point in 2008 where I was my performance anxiety became so much that I was afraid to play mm. and I got injured I tore my ACL that tournament and I had this moment and I remember in the locker room I remember it and I just remember thinking I work too darn hard and I love this game too much, just not enjoy it. And so from that moment on, I started really looking at my mindset, how I approached mistakes, my self-talk, my self-compassion. And not only that, we, we were blessed as a national team to work with Dr. Kerry Evans, who is with the New Zealand All Blacks now. And he started teaching me these breathing techniques, very simple techniques to bring me back to the present moment. And at the moment, at the time I didn't realize it they were all these mindfulness techniques and anxiety and stress in general, not just in sport exists any time that you're outside of the present moment. And so practicing mindfulness is really just present being in the present moment as often as possible, which is also the zone. So it all kind of like mixed mm -hmm. well together. And uh, I was really lucky to come upon Dr. Rachel Lindvall, who's now my business partner and she has her doctorate in mindfulness research. And between her, what she was researching and learning and me basically being this guinea pig going through all this stuff, we kind of decided, well, we should help young people um, enjoy their experience more with sport, enjoy uh, being out there and understanding your relationship with stress and nerves and all these things. And how do we get them in the moment more often and, and love themselves more? And that's kind of, again, the long version of how the Mindful Project was born. And, and recently we created a high performance program where there's mental training, there's guided relaxations that are after a game or the morning after a game or mobility. And there's just all these tools, mindfulness tools that you get to choose from, but also this personal development side. I'm wondering about maybe some concrete examples of how you have seen this in action in yourself both on the field and and off. So let's start with on the field. Like what's, what's a moment where you could really put this into practice? I can, I can think of a million, but for you, something that you can think of. Goalkeepers, we're all very unique, right? But aside from the crazy aspect, uh, we have, I mean, we all have pressure, <laughs> but letting a goal in is, uh, or, or making a mistake can be, you know, the stakes are high as a goalkeeper. So, getting back into the present moment um, is is clutch. So, and this I got from Dr. Kerry Evans, literally after something had happened to refocus into the moment, I would focus on breathing in for three seconds and then breathing out for four seconds and counting while I did that. Hmm. And so breathing out with a longer out breath calms activates your parasympathetic nervous system, you calm down, you make better decisions when you're calm. So there, that was number one. And then number two was expanding my vision. So seeing the entire field and you know, to my right fullback, my left fullback, everything I could absorb and expanding your vision also automatic, automatically calms you down. And then I would start communicating everything that I, that I could see and give information to my players. And there I am again, another tool to get me back into the moment. So for me, that was, especially during the London Olympics, I used that constantly. I, I just, I find it so fascinating in the world of, of high performance and sort of the, the combination between sort of a traditional mindfulness practice and sports psychology. Um, but it's in particular, just the ability to pull yourself out of a moment that might've seemed catastrophic, right? I mean, that's- Well, absolutely. And, and I think in sports still, which, it's interesting, it is changing, but this old school mentality that you have to be brutal to yourself or mm -hmm. that if you make a mistake, a coach has to be brutal on you. And what I love about working with Rachel is there's all this research that proves that being negative towards yourself when you're learning or others being negative towards you, it actually impedes your learning, it slows down your learning. So there's 
literally no purpose in being hard on yourself or being brutal to someone when they've made a mistake. Well, I love this. I think it's so important. And as you say, especially now, uh, how can people find out more? All of our programs are, you can find them at our website, mindfulproject.ca. We have the, the young, we have a young sports program for around eight to 13 years old. And we have the free COVID program, same age group. And then we have the high performance program, which we recommend for 15 years and over. So a couple of questions though, before I, I let you go, uh, you will be making your way back to Orlando and to the pride and uh, hopefully another national women's soccer league season. The angel city FC uh, announced its formation this July, and it's an interesting study um, in a group of sort of celebrity uh, benefactors coming together to create this team, including Serena Williams and Serena's daughter, um, Natalie Portman, P.K. Subban, yeah. Lindsey Vaughn. What do you think that kind of movement can, can do for the league itself? Well, I think it's inspiring, first of all, and it's also challenging the way that things have been done. Mm. And as a very proud Canadian, I would love to see that happen in our country. I remember watching Elizabeth Manley, 1988 figure skating, winning her silver medal. And that was the first time I saw a female athlete on TV and it changed my life. I was like, I'm going to the Olympics because everyone in, in my whole family was watching TV, bawling their eyes out, <laughs> watching her win this medal. And it had such an impact on me. This whole Angel City thing has just, I think made a lot of people rethink um, the way that professional teams can be run and that it is possible to do it with a group of people that believe in something. And for me, it's not just sport. What sport has the capacity to do is create leaders and mentors and people that will give back to the community. And I think, you know, it would be wonderful to have something like that in Canada. So it has been very inspiring and um, I will definitely do everything that I can to continue to push for something like that in Canada. Wouldn't that be amazing? It'd be incredible. Yes. <laughs> and Aaron, what we uh, leave all of our guests with is this question. And that is, what is your best advice for a young Aaron McLeod? Oof. I think I would say that mistakes are an essential part of growth mm -hmm. and that in order to grow, you have to make them. And so if you could be self-compassionate and loving to yourself, every time you make one, not only will you grow faster, but you'll enjoy the process a lot more. I love that very much. And yeah. it's, it's good advice, no matter what age you are. <laughs> yes, I'm still <laughs> working on it. <laughs> yeah. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you very much for having me.